Professor Li Haidong of China Foreign Affairs University said Rex Tillerson's admission that Washington and Pyongyang are talking shows the U.S. is committed to diplomacy. But if those talks were out in the open, he said, it would help prevent the kind of miscalculation that could lead to war. The expert also noted that the U.S. is trying to get China and Russia to do more to make such official multilateral talks possible. Monday at a ceremony for the Day of Separated Families where he said North Korea should not disregard the pain felt by such families and act to resolve the issue. The North Korean regime is yet to respond to an offer from Seoul for reunions. The last such reunion was held in October 2015. Minister Cho said South Korea's policy is to treat the issue as separate from political and military considerations and that it will do its utmost to help separated families keep in touch noting that people with family north of the border are now in their very senior years. U.S. President Donald Trump says talks with North Korea over its nuclear program are a waste of time. His comments come a day after his own Secretary of State said the United States was maintaining open lines of communication with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Writing on Twitter, Trump used his sarcastic name for Kim and appeared to contradict the top U.S. diplomat. The North Korean leader carried out his sixth nuclear test and fired a ballistic missile over Japan last month, sparking international outrage and prompting new sanctions from the U.S. Experts say North Korea is getting closer to achieving its long-stated goal of building nuclear-armed missiles capable of hitting anywhere on the U.S. mainland. Chuseok, or Korean Thanksgiving, is one of North Korea's 18 public holidays. But quite unlike South Koreans who are enjoying an extended 10-day break this year, the regime gives its citizens just one day. For decades after the Korean Peninsula was divided in 1945, Chuseok was not observed as a public holiday in North Korea as it was considered a, quote, breach of the manners of socialism and was only reinstated as a public holiday 29 years ago near the end of the Cold War. 
North Koreans, just like South Koreans, visit their ancestors' graves to pay their respect on this day and also eat songpyeon, a traditional half-moon-shaped rice cake. Many also make a pilgrimage to the statue of the regime's founder, Kim Il-sung, at the Mansude complex in Pyongyang. However, overall, the way they celebrate is much more modest compared to their southern counterparts. While millions of South Koreans head back to their hometowns to visit friends and relatives or take a vacation abroad, according to Seoul's unification ministry, there is, quote, hardly any movement between regions in the north. But other public holidays are celebrated on a much larger scale, such as the birthdays of the regime's late former leaders, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, which fall on April 15th and February 16th, respectively. In a series of tweets on Sunday, President Trump appeared to undercut his own Secretary of State's diplomatic efforts to resolve the nuclear standoff with North Korea. Using his nickname for Kim Jong-un, Trump said, I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful Secretary of State, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with little rocket man. Save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. President Trump's comments came a day after Tillerson revealed the U.S. was directly communicating with North Korea on its nuclear and missile programs, but that Pyongyang had shown no interest. During a trip to China, Tillerson said Washington was probing North Korea to see whether it was interested in dialogue and that it had a couple of channels open to talk with Pyongyang. Later Sunday evening, Trump took to Twitter again, adding, Being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years. Why would it work now? Clinton failed, Bush failed, and Obama failed. I won't fail. Not long after Trump's final tweet on the matter, State Department spokesperson Heather Newitt confirmed that diplomatic channels are open for now, but won't be open forever. It's unclear how successful diplomatic communications will be in curbing North Korea's nuclear ambitions, since the leaders of both countries have been locked in an escalating war of words. North Korea has continued to test missiles and is threatening to explode a hydrogen bomb over the Pacific Ocean and shoot down U.S. military aircraft off its coast. As he traveled to China late last week, U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was confident even optimistic. While there, he revealed that the Americans have been secretly speaking directly with DPRK officials. News which may have shocked U.S. President Donald Trump's base at home, given his anti-Pyongyang rhetoric, but news that was welcomed by China. Beijing believes dialogue is the only way to resolve the DPRK nuclear issue. It has repeatedly said it sees no military option. Now on Sunday, this tweet from Donald Trump. Quote, I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful Secretary of State, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with Little Rocket Man. That's Trump's new nickname for DPRK leader Kim Jong-un, coined on the global stage last month. Trump continued, save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. Hours later, the U.S. president tweeted again. Being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years. Why would it work now? Clinton failed, Bush failed, and Obama failed. I won't fail. Trump is due to visit China next month, as well as key U.S. allies in the region. Meanwhile, the Americans say they've confirmed a Hong Kong port call later this month for the USS Reagan. The 100,000-ton supercarrier is the only one based outside of U.S. waters and on Saturday conducted, quote, routine drills in the South China Sea, under the watchful eye of two Chinese frigates. The Hong Kong port call would be its first in three years, after the Reagan was denied one last year. South Korea's defense ministry says, later in the month, the Reagan will join its navy in exercises on detecting, tracking, and intercepting ballistic missiles. Among the types of exercises that Pyongyang says are aggressive, and wants stopped. China and Russia have been doubling down on their so-called double freeze proposal, whereby the DPRK would freeze all nuclear activity and the U.S., Japan, and South Korea would freeze all drills. The Trump administration has rejected that idea. It says the drills are legitimate, justified, and necessary. Rowie Ruttenberg, CGTN in Washington. One day after Secretary of State Rex Tillerson 
left that door open, it seems. He was in Beijing, you can see there. Uh, when uh, they announced that the U.S. had a direct line of communication with Pyongyang. Well, today, the president tweeted this, quote, Being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years. Why would it work now? Clinton failed, Bush failed, and Obama failed. I won't fail. That after the president earlier this morning tweeted this, I told Rex Tillerson, our wonderful secretary of state, that he is wasting his time trying to negotiate with little Rocket Man. Save your energy, Rex. We'll do what has to be done. Well, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton echoed the president earlier when he was on America's News headquarters here in the Fox News Channel. I think uh, the pre president's absolutely right. It confounds me to, to think that uh, the State Department is still trying to talk to North Korea. If that's what Secretary, Secretary Tillerson meant, uh, it is a complete waste of time. It's a waste of oxygen. Well, let's bring in Alan Smith, now politics reporter for the Business Insider. Alan, welcome. Is the president undermining the Secretary of State, do you think, or is this a strategy to try to put more pressure on Kim Jong-un and, and Beijing? So, I mean, well, it's one, it's one of the two things right there. So either the administration's really not on the same page in terms of what messages that they're projecting, or they're doing this intentionally. So if this is happening intentionally, uh, we, we know that the North Korean diplomats are already quite confused. It's been reported that uh, North Korean diplomats have reached out to Republican consultants in D.C. You know, to see why is it that the cabinet officials and Trump, uh, their, their messaging is not on the same page. Why, why is that? So we know that Trump, you know, he, uh, as, as was reported by Axios earlier today, you know, he wanted his uh, trade representative, Lighthizer, to, you know, tell the South Koreans that, look, this guy's crazy. He could pull out of the South Korean trade deal at any moment. So Trump does like to project, you know, sort of that madman theory on foreign policy. So it seems likely that he, he does enjoy confusing the North Koreans you know, that's, to an extent. That so-called madman theory, I mean, it, it kind of worked for President Nixon when it came to China, obviously. And it wouldn't be a good thing to confuse the North Koreans because they would take a, take a deep breath and stop and say, well, wait a minute, what are we doing? I mean, this could really be dangerous by uh, popping off all these missiles and with all these threats. Absolutely, and, and that would appear to be the goal by the Trump administration. If they're going along this path of, you know, trying to implement the madman theory here in North Korea, they think that, look, if we can sort of out crazy Kim Jong-un a little bit, maybe he's going to take some steps back and think, all right, wait a minute, maybe I don't have as much leeway to, to play around with here as I previously did. Would that get them to the table potentially, do you think? I, I think it could potentially get them to the table. I mean, Trump has said very recently that diplomacy is not something that's off the table. He was asked during the U.N. week, they, they, they said, look, is, is diplomacy an option here? And he said, you know, something along the lines of, you know, we'll see, why not? Um, so, he you wants, know. He wants that he'd be honored to meet Kim Jong-un. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he said him. that before. He's, he's even entertained the idea of Kim Jong-un coming to the White House. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the tweets, you know, if you take them by themselves, they look, you know, a little maybe concerning, but if you look at the entire message, Trump has sort of been all over the place on, on what he wants to do with North, with North Korea. But what you're saying is, have, having covered the UN uh, the, the other week, that there is a different tone between the tweets and between uh, his, his, some of his speeches and some of what he says, even though he had a very blunt speech at the United Nations, off the cuff, it's a different tone, you think? Absolutely. I mean, and it's not only for North Korea. There are many subjects where it's like this, where Trump takes a much uh, stronger, a more brash, even a more bombastic tone on Twitter. Uh, but when asked, you know, face to face, he seems to be taking, you know, somewhat of a more pragmatic mm -hmm. stance. I mean, especially when he was asked about North Korea, if diplomacy is still an option. I mean, he, he made it seem as if it was on the table. And his cabinet secretaries have all talked up diplomacy uh, whenever asked. But he does have a point in the, in the latest tweet later this afternoon when he said, being nice to Rocket Man hasn't worked in 25 years. Why would it work now? Clinton failed, Bush failed, Obama failed. I won't fail. Uh, look, 1994, the oil for food a program under the Clinton administration didn't work. North Korea completely lied. You've got the six-party talks that, that basically failed. And President George W. Bush took North Korea off the terrorist list. I mean, that's an olive branch to them, and they gave us the baseball bat instead. I mean, President George W. Bush tried, and it still didn't work. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we still are having this conversation about North Korea today means that all of the previous administrations, you know, since the Korean War, really, have not been able to make any progress on this front. So what would it take, do you think? Well, you know, I think the Trump administration is trying something much different than, than prior administrations by trying to, 
you know, out provoke North Korea. We've seen previously that more uh, more docile approaches haven't worked as effectively. So, you know, maybe this is what gets them to the table. But I will say this: um, President Bush was at a private dinner last week, and he was asked, "Will reunification of the Korean Peninsula happen uh, in in your lifetime?" And he said, "No, he did not think mm -hmm. so." Uh, and reunification of the peninsula is essentially what. I personally think would need to happen in order for North Korea to become a more open society. Well, North Korea wants to reunify the peninsula under their control yes. and, and kick us 28,000 troops out and have us stop the uh, military, joint military exercises. I mean, some of this on the table uh, earlier, John Bolton, when I interviewed him today, also said this uh, about the talks and about some of the North Korean aims. Let's listen. My prediction would be if at any point North Korea suddenly announces they want to sit down to talks, it means they're this close to getting a deliverable nuclear weapons capability and they want to make absolutely sure they get across the finish line uh, while we're playing the sucker. But bottom line, we're playing the sucker, he says. Can we ever, do you think, trust them? Well, they haven't uh, at least publicly shown much trustworthiness so far, and uh, I think that the ambassador is right that they are trying as hard as they can to get across the finish line uh, with that nuclear weapon. And, and I, I, too, don't think that they're going to want to come to the negotiating table until they have that in their back pocket, right, because that's going to be their most powerful negotiating chip. Uh, 